What I wanted to talk to you guys about today is things you should never do with a cat. You know, I've been on the radio for, for 41 years talking to you and TV for many years as well. And very often I hear people call me with questions and when I delve into them, I find out things that they are doing with their cat that are totally, totally contrary to what they should. So I put a list together. I'm gonna to go down step by step things I believe you should never do with your cat. You know, I often joke, but it's true. Some cats think that their name is no. So focus on the positive behavior. You know, if you're constantly telling your cat no, 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 you're really destroying your cat's self-image. So sometimes when your cat is just lying around or, or hanging out or staring out the window, just go over and say, what a good boy, what a good girl, and pat him on the head. Remember, they're not doing anything wrong, so hearing no all the time is just going to make them frustrated, and they're going to eventually learn the word no means that there's nothing they can do to resolve any situation. So I'm a big believer in focusing on the positive. The negatives very often will take care of themselves. This is also important. One of the biggest problems I run into is people that are living with cats that totally bore their cats out. You must remember that cats are nomadic by nature. What does that mean? In a natural environment, they roam around, they look here, they look here, they smell this, they smell that. However, in our homes, everything is pretty much stagnant. Well, it shouldn't be, but in many homes it is. So what I recommend is to make your home interesting. But before you make it interesting, follow this. You may go out, and you may spend a lot of money on this incredible, beautiful scratching post in your house. The cat has no idea how much that scratching post costs, and he may actually love it. But you know what? After a while, he's looking for other things to do. So here's my recommendation, and I talk about this all the time. Most people shop at the supermarket, right? Go to the supermarket, get some cardboard boxes, but be really creative. Put one on top of the other, make a little kitty condo, a duplex, cut holes in them. Boxes are free and they smell great to cats. One smells like chicken, one smells like meat, one smells like vegetables, and replace them every day. As I said, cats are free. Making their environment rich will make their life richer as well. And it's not just the boxes and, and growing organic plants, which is something you should do. Check on the plants that are safe for your cat. If you can have plants in your house or flowers in your house, just make sure they're safe and they're not toxic to your pets. One of the big problems I also run into is, you know, I grew up in a household where food was love. Yeah, we were never chubby as the kids. We were just big boned. Make sure you don't overfeed your cat. The same problems that humans have with overfeeding and obesity, by the way, 50% of all American pets are now considered obese. Uh, it can develop arthritis, diabetes, and many other ailments. The recommendation by so many people is not to leave food down for your cat all day long. But what you should be doing is feeding them several small meals throughout the day. That's healthier for them. However, I know a lot of people do self-feeding and in some cases you can't help it. But if you can, a couple of feedings, three, four feedings, smaller throughout the day can make all the difference. And the thing that drives me crazy is never ever declaw your cat. You know, people say, but Warren, my cat's scratching this and he's scratching that. I gotta get the claws off. He's destroying everything in the house. Well. If you had a child in your house that was knocking things over the table, would you amputate his arms or would you teach him right from wrong? Teach your cat right from wrong. If you encourage your cat and give your cat ample things to scratch, and as I said earlier, understand that they need changes consistently in their environment, then you'll start noticing that they won't be scratching on your stuff as much. By the way, there are some amazing methods to resolve issues with cat scratching as well. Declawing is abusive. It should be against the law as it is in many countries and many states and many cities. So never ever declaw your cat unless your vet gives you a, a medical reason for it, which is rare, but occasionally it does happen. Declawing is not just a matter of clipping the cat's nails, it's actually an amputation. A lot of people assume that cats are also a lot less, uh, a lot less demanding than dogs are. For example, you know, you can't leave your dog alone all the time, but people will leave their cat for two or three days. I don't recommend it at all. I never recommend leaving a cat by themselves for more than 24 hours. Someone should be there to check on them, make sure they're using the litter box, make sure they're eating, make sure they're not stressed out. That's really important. The other day, I was watching the show on TV, and they were talking about shaving down the cat for the summer to make the cat cooler. Shame, 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 shame. Listen to me carefully. If you have a cat with long hair, Mother Nature put that hair there for a reason. Hair, fur, acts as a, uh, the same way that insulation acts. For example, if it's a really hot day and you shave the cat down, that heat's gonna go directly to the cat's skin. Not a good idea. But if the cat has its regular coat, by the time that heat reaches the skin, it's already cooled down by going through the insulating factor of the coat. 
So I would never, never, ever shave down your cat for any reason whatsoever, unless they're having surgery or something. And on the same token, uh, the coat keeps the cat warm in the wintertime. It's just like insulation. So Mother Nature knows what she's doing, so don't shave your cats. And one of the things that I get called about on the show very often is, you know, my cat's not playing anymore, or my cat's not doing this anymore, or my cat's not as affectionate as he was. I try to explain to people that talking about, you know, your cat not being affection, affectionate the way it used to be or not eating the same way or not playing the same way, these are all changes that you should be aware of. I tell people to keep a little chart. You don't have to do it like a diary and write every day, but keep a little chart on any significant behavior changes you might notice in your cat. They're not eating the same way. They're not pooping the same way. Their poop looks different. Uh, they're not happy. Their hours, uh, sleeping hours are changed. All of that can make a difference. So these are things you want to really document. So if you have a conversation with your vet or behaviors, you can figure out what may be causing those changes in behavior. Here's the big one. Lauren, I'm sitting on the couch. I love my cat. My cat loves me. But, but, all of a sudden, as I'm petting him, he turns around and bites me. Don't overstimulate your cat. There are several reasons this happens. You know, the petting aggressive behavior. Number one, if you're petting a cat, very often you can overstimulate them, causing them to react in a negative way. So don't do that. Number two is that very often while you're stroking your cat, they get into a position or a state of nirvana. They realize they're vulnerable and they'll strike out as well. One of the things I recommend for people, and, and so you should never, ever, ever ever overstimulate your cat. But what you can do is give them short periods. Every cat is different. Every cat has a, a, a different ability to take certain things. So know your cat, understand the concept that, that some cats you can pet longer. No, you can look at things and, and the cat's uh, eyes will change, the tail will change, all of the body will change it also. Know your cat's uh, ability and know their limits when it comes to stimulation. Don't overstimulate your pet. Don't neglect their need to scratch. There are so many cats that wind up at shelters and it drives me crazy because it scratched my chair, it scratched this, it scratched that. Cats also have scent glands on the bottom of their feet. Cats need to scratch. It's a way of, uh, uh, of alleviate anxiety. It's kind of like, uh, what can I uh, relate it to? When a cat scratches, it may be someone smoking a cigar in their backyard or, or having a, a cocktail at night. Scratching helps alleviate a lot of anxiety and also helps the cat claim territory. So if you're a cat, if you have a cat, and all cats like to scratch, obviously, if you were listening to me earlier, never correct the cat for that. Never yell at the cat for that. Just make sure there are plenty of options for the cat to scratch on things that are not going to destroy you. And once again, let me just leave you with this. How many people have heard people at the, at the pet store, uh, well-meaning friends, uh, veterinarians, and other people, even other behaviors saying, if the cat is doing something wrong, spray the cat with water. <whistles> horrible, horrible idea. Or shake a can at the cat. When you make a loud noise, or you spray water at a cat, you're not resolving a problem. What you're doing is you're actually causing anxiety and stress, making the problem a lot worse for the cat in the future. If you take the time to educate your cat, and I'm not gonna drop out my book here, but how to get your cat to do what you want. We talk about the concept of building a cat's self-image, and that's critical. That's why I felt it was so important to put down things you should never do with your cat, because all of these things can make a difference. If you take the time to build up your cat's self-confidence, to build up their self-image, and to try to look at your home from the cat's point of view. This may sound eccentric, but uh, get on your hands and knees and walk around the house, see what it looks like. So many cats, as I said, wind up at shelters or don't have the, the enjoyable life they can have because owners and guardians are doing things the wrong way. Remember, look at life from your cat's point of view. You'll be a lot happier. Your cat will be a lot better behaved and you'll have that symbiotic relationship that you're looking for. I'll more next time.